the study that I have uh, today is on the uh, seven angels. Now, where'd that come from? Well, when we start out, we think of William Miller, uh, who started the, was instrumental in starting the Advent movement in 1833. They went to 1844. He was preaching that the Savior was going to come then. And uh, as they got closer to this, William Miller realized that uh, some of the people were be embracing this message, many were, and in embracing this message, they were being kicked out of their churches. And so he realized that uh, in time, this whole movement realized that they were teaching the three angels message. And when they were kicked out of the churches, they began to look at the other churches as Babylon. And so when they were kicked out of the other churches, they um, finally came in, the movement finally came into Sabbath keeping. And of course, Ellen White's visions and the movement's been going on ever since. So coming to uh, Revelation uh, chapter 14, <clears throat> we're going to look at seven angels and their messages. And in Revelation 14, when I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their hearts. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. These are, these are they which were not defiled with women. And we understand the women there are the churches, the uh, false churches apostate Protestant churches, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first roots unto Yahweh and to the Lamb. Of course, we understand this to be the 144,000. The first fruits, yeah. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of Yahweh. All right, now we come to the first angel's message here. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Okay, when it says, I saw another angel, where do we get here? Where does it say the first angel? In this uh, text, it doesn't say first angel, but as we read on, we're going to find that it is the first angel. Now we're going to read in verse 7. And saying with a loud voice, Fear Yahweh and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Now this was uh, the what William Miller and the teachings that began the Advent movement. And uh, there's only one movement that I know of in the world today that has been proclaiming the three angels message and that is the Adventist church at the Advent movement. And verse eight, now this was angel number one. So let's count them. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Uh, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So at this time then, uh, the, in the Millerite movement, they realized that the Protestant churches had fallen from the truth and become apostate Protestantism, and they began to teach then that Babylon has fallen. In verse number nine, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, 
and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the, okay, now what, what angel are we on here? Okay, this is angel number three. Two was the Babylon's fallen. First one, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Uh, the, the second one, the Babylon's fallen. So we're on the third angel's message here. Okay. And in the three angels' message, once again, uh, and the smoke of their torment sent up forever and ever, who worship the beast in his image. Now we understand uh, without confusion who the beast is. The only one power that matches that throughout time is the papal system. And the um, mark of his name is the mark, what they claim is that what marks the ecclesiastical power is their power to change the Sabbath from Saturday, Sunday. Oh, now, here are they, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of our Savior. This is still going on now. This is what we're proclaiming now in the third angel's message. Now, um, we're going to look to get the fourth angel. We're going to uh, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1. And it says, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having excuse me, great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. So, and now whose glory is it lighted with? We know the angel is only a reflection of the heavenly father and or the savior's glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This Revelation 18 connects us with the second angel's message back here in Revelation 14 that says Babylon is fallen. There's there, there's, we see that connection there. Now, this fourth angel had come into the Advent movement as the Advent movement was being like a present or like a, a, something that was packaged. It came as a package to the Advent movement. And it was being, as it was being unpacked, uh, Jones and Wagner came with a message that was teaching this fourth angel's message. Here are they that keep the commandments. They were teaching the covenant message. They were teaching the, uh, the statutes, the laws of Moses to be kept. Uh, the statutes were part of that. And there was a certain amount of leadership that, of course, rejected that. And, and this is all documented. I'm not trying to say something bad about anybody uh, for the sake of saying that. But what I'm uh, saying is that the, when the leadership turned against it, Ellen White uh, had documented this material and, and our early uh, pioneer movement documented this material that that fourth angel was turned back to heaven because of their rejection of the light that was shining on them at that time. Now, I believe, and I think you do too, that the three angels message are here to be repeated again. Now, when the fourth angel comes back, and the light from heaven begins to shine on the end time movement and the end time people. That fourth angel this time, I believe, is going to be accepted by a group of people that are uh, like uh, Sherry was talking about earlier and Randy is referring to, a people that are washing their character in the blood of the lamb with clean white robes. So when that angel comes back and gives power to the third angel message here, the earth is going, going to be uh, lighted up. And I believe we're coming right now into that period of time as they structure uh, the final movements to bring in a global system that will control and be able to persecute worldwide uh, through this, uh, the beast system. Okay, now in... Uh, the next angel, after this third angel comes down and the, the earth begins to light up, let's look now at verse 13 uh, of Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which 
die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Um, once again, I've, I've been privileged to set in the pews of the Adventism um, going on, uh, this summer will be 73 years. And I'm thankful for that. My great grandmother was, was an Adventist. Doesn't mean I've done everything right, but I've been able to see within the system a lot of what's been going on. Uh, I certainly don't know it all, but I've, I've had some experience with it. All right, now when we come to verse 14, uh, we're going to see this time when it, uh, just a little reminder, when it played with our early pioneers, that fourth angel was sent back to heaven. So no more light came to the Advent movement as far as regards to the development of the other angels that were to come on the scene. There's a lot, a flood of light that has come to the Advent movement. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying a blanket statement here, but the other angels weren't able to come on board because that angel went back to heaven. So we're still in the process of proclaiming this third angel's message. But in the time that we're in now, as we um, become um, energized with the Holy Spirit, walking in this last time, as these three messages come back and we begin to proclaim them, moving on to the fourth angel, here's where we're going to be brought. In the fifth angel, and I looked and behold a white cloud, and a, this is setting the scene for the fifth angel. And I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set like the son of man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. So what the Savior is doing, he travels, Yahshua travels, on a cloud of angels, his throne. They bear the throne of our Savior. And he's, he will be mounting this cloud, and he has a sharp sickle in his hand. And this is part of the three angels' message. This is what, what should have happened back in 1844. They would have been in the kingdom. But in our time, this is going to happen, and it's going to happen one angel after another. And as the Savior is directing the harvest now, as we come into the harvest of 144,000 and the rest of the earth, we see that the Savior, that sickle represents that he's directing the harvest, and the time for the harvest has come. Now, in verse 14, we look, uh, 15, excuse me. And in verse 15, it said, And another angel came out of the tabernacle, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the throne, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And brothers and sisters, we're moving into that time. There are, we need to have what's ripe, our characters, the development of our characters. We want to be in that group. Pray that you'll be among the 144,000, is what Sister White said. And so this other angel is the fifth angel. So follow with me here. This fifth angel is, once again, another angel came out of the tabernacle, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Who is harvested first? The 144,000. This angel is reaping and harvesting the 144,000. During This is what, the fifth angel. This is what is just before us. After that fourth angel comes down, that fifth angel will be harvesting the 144,000. Verse 16. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in the sickle uh, and on the earth, and the earth was reaped. This is the the harvest of the righteous. Verse 17, and another angel came out of the tabernacle, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. This is the sixth angel. Who is that? When the 144,000 are sealed and go forward and give the message, this sixth angel is represented by the wheat harvest. That's the great multitude that comes in through the working and the, the preaching of the 144,000. That's the sixth angel representing the wheat harvest and 144,000 representing the barley harvest. And verse 18, excuse me. Go ahead. Okay. Verse 18, we'll have some questions when I get done here for those of you that would like to comment or question. Verse 18, and another 
angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that sat, uh, or that had the sharp sickle, saying, thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. They are so ripe, they're overripe, and they're rotten on the vine, if I might interject that. In verse 19, and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and, the, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of Yahweh. These are represented by those during the harvest that are gathered up to go through the seven last plagues or the wrath of Yahweh. That's the wicked. So there's, we find these angels then in a harvest. They're harvesting the 144,000, the great multitude, and the wicked. The wicked are, uh, they're not harvested to be put in, in as crops that are going to be good crops. The grapes are the, the bad crops that are laid aside to suffer the seven last plagues. Okay, in verse 20, and the wine press was trodden without the city and the blood came out of the wine press even unto the horse's bridle by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Now, how do we know that the, um, the wrath is the seven last plagues? Look at verse 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of Yahweh. So there's a clue in scripture that tells us that the plagues are the fulfillment of the wrath of Yahweh in this um, in, in the last harvest. So what we're coming into, we're seeing the final movements lining up the time period for uh, the papacy to be able to persecute on a world, worldwide scale. The papacy has called together leaders of the world to meet with them in May. That's been canceled, but they may do Zoom, I don't know. But we are coming into that period of time where watching this whole drama unfold before our eyes. We're, we're actually a living part of it. But the hope is to be able to see beyond all of this turmoil that's going on and lies before us. To be able to see the messages, to know where we are, and to be able to understand that when these angels present their messages, that we're going to be a part of that and be part of presenting the message and giving the loud cry message. We know the end of the story, that here we are, uh, that, that they're redeemed. So at this point then, probation closes, uh, right here in Revelation 14, when probation closes, then the seven last plagues start. And isn't it interesting that indeed is the next chapter. And that's where the wrath or the seven last plagues are poured out. Now, um, how long are the seven last plagues? Uh, uh, Revelation says her plagues come um, in one day. And because there's symbolic content in that passage, we, are, we can understand that the timing is symbolic. So it's a day for a year. So we're looking through scripture telling us, not making it up ourselves, but by scripture telling us and using the principles of the application here uh, that the plagues will be over a year period of time. And Sister White says that we should take what we read lit uh, literal or as it reads, she says, we should take it as it reads unless a symbol is employed. And then we are to uh, look at it as having symbolic content. Well, I went through this quite rapidly but I was thinking that, um, yeah, very, very close. I was going to bring more information in on the background of the Advent movement. But, um, you know, what I like, so many of us are looking at um, what is the definition? I'd like to ask this, what is the definition of the church? In Acts 14, 22, and in the upper look, Sister White says this. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that Yahweh had done. That's Acts 14, 27. Sister White says, the church is never a place. It's not a minister. It's not a committee. 
or some conference. And I'm not condemning brothers and sisters. I'm saying we need conferences, we need committees. But anyway, that's not what the church is. It is not the great cathedral, neither is it the various denominations, but always a people, never a fold, but always a flock, never a sacred building, but always a believing assembly. The church is you, not where you pay, but where you pray. The church is where the Savior is, even among the humble few. This is the Savior's church, for the presence of the High and Holy One, who inhabiteth eternity, can alone constitute a church. Now, um, I went through that very quickly on the seven angels here, but but I would like to, um, if I, if I may, open some of the end time of it up here for questions or comments that any of you may have. So if we can stop there and then. Uh, do, if anyone has questions, uh, go ahead, feel free. That's fine. Go ahead, anybody. Uh, yeah. What was that reference again about the definition of the church? I really uh, that, think. Uh, upward, okay, yeah. that's in the upward look, page three fifteen. Thank you. That's a compilation, but you're welcome. Yeah, Joy has a question here. Go ahead. Hi, I'll make it real quick. That's Can you hear uh, her. I, I wasn't no sure. I wasn't sure where the seventh angel was in the fourteenth chapter of Revelation. Was that in verse uh, eighteen? That was the seventh angel. One. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. I closed my book there. Let me get it I'm real sorry, quick so here. Okay. Um, say that again now. Okay. So we're looking for where the seventh angel was, and I think it was verse eighteen. Of chapter 14. Uh, that is correct. Uh, verse 18 is the seventh angel, and the seventh angel is the gathering of the grapes on the vine, or gathering together those in bundles that are going to be burned. Right. Now, now just, just to clarify, verse 17 was about the sixth angel, correct? Uh, that, yeah. that is correct, yes. That's the Thank you. wheat harvest. Thank you very much. Right. You're welcome. Does anybody else have a comment or question on that? Some of you've heard this before. I know, Gerald, you have, but but these are the th these are the things that lie before us as the world movements are being put together here. These are the things that are going to be going through. So it's my hope and prayer that we are certainly in the first harvest here of the 144,000. That's why Sister White said, "Strive to be among the 144,000." Okay, does anybody else have a question or a comment they'd like to make? Yeah, Joseph, um, yeah. I'm a little confused here on this. Okay. Uh, um, I, I understand the seven angels and so on, but were you saying that this is all, this, this harvest is happening before the plagues? I'm just a little confused. Um, yes, I'm saying the harvest of the righteous takes place all these seven angels messages are, are done and that at the end of that seventh me, uh, angel is the angel that uh that's where probation closes right in that period of time those seven harvest angels yes i'm seeing those that though that all takes place be uh up to the close of probation this all and takes the probation on the world that's probation on the world. Yeah. Probation yeah, for not on not on the this is the, the church. And the, the what do we remember? The wicked are not harvested. They're gathered in bundles. They're gathered, gathered in okay. bundles to yeah. be burned. But and Sherry, there'd be no need for messages after probation closed. No right. need for warning messages. Okay. These messages are warning messages. Right. So I guess I guess what I'm I'm asking is what does it mean to harvest then? I mean uh, just means to seal, to seal the people. Yeah, it seems like that's close of probation language, not necessarily leaving the planet language, but close of probation language. Right, right. Okay, okay. Um, 
the hardest means um, for one, you know, there's other ways to look at it besides uh, from the standpoint point of uh, a harvest. In other words, we look at the, the early rain and the latter rain in relationship to a harvest. But another way to look at it outside of the harvest uh, terminology, we can look at it in the marriage terminology. This is the time, the ceiling of the 144,000 okay. is, is the uh, marriage to the, uh, the bride to the bridegroom. This is when this takes place just before probation closes. So we can bring the analogies either from a marriage or from a, a harvest or whatever, but um, the, in the harvest language, yes, this is the, the 144,000, the great multitude. They're called in and uh, my understanding, this is where their names are left on the book. Their names remain on the book. This determines that whose names are on the book. Of, in the book of life when probation closes. Okay. And that, hey, Paul have a question? What's that? Does Paul have a question? His little oh. hand is red. Yeah. Yeah, Hi. Cool. It's Millie, not Paul. Okay. <laughs> but, um, okay. It's Paul. Um, we were just wondering if you would by any chance be able to um, you know, put your notes online or something so one can go over the notes more slowly and study them? Okay. Um, uh, yes, I need, uh, what I'd like to do, Sister, I, I have several of the studies on PowerPoint, but this particular one I do not. And uh, what I'd like to do is to put it on PowerPoint and at some other time, then if, uh, if Sandy would like, I can once it's on PowerPoint, I can have pictures, Ellen White quotes and things like that, that you could actually make a copy of. That would be better. I'm just kind of uh, freelancing here with, with this study, just from scripture alone, okay. Uh, okay. But I- well, Right now, you can watch the replay on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know I can rewatch it, but- I like to have something in writing so I can sit and go back to the Bible and make notes. Right. Well, you see, the, the thing is, this was what was being unpacked in 1844. If the fourth angel was not, did not return to heaven, this fifth angel would have come on the scene. The 144,000 would have been sealed. They had the Sunday law on board. It was out in the laws. It was ready to be passed. S Sister White said, within a few years they would have been in heaven this could have all played back yeah. then but the other angels were stopped from coming on board and this is where when it begins to play again these angels are going to go forward because we're coming into the time now of the harvest this is why we see all the events around us taking place we're getting very close to the end now oh yeah exactly mm -hmm. I'll try to get this on PowerPoint where you have pictures and uh, Ellen White quotes because I do have a lot more quotes that will help support this. Uh, Joseph, there was actually in uh, 1888, you know, they had the, the Blair National Sunday Law. Sure, yes. And after that, after that, they had the, Blank the Blankenridge also that they tried yes. to pass. Right. And the Blankenridge, it, they tried to pass it for, I don't know, eight or 10 years afterwards. And finally they gave up. Right. And so, uh, and along with that, I, Jones and Wagner, they actually come out teaching uh, the law of Moses and uh, righteousness by faith message. And when they did, um, some of the leaders, uh, unfortunately, had uh, in 1891, they sent Ellen White to Australia because she had traveled with them, Jones and Wagner, for about three years. And they were presenting these messages. So the angel had actually come down and this light was beginning to light up and go forward. And uh, some of the leadership got a hold of it. They sent uh, Ellen White in 1891 to Australia. They sent Elder Wagner to Europe and they kept Jones here. And so what happened was the movement uh, of peacekeeping, uh, Miller started out with it, that the second coming was going to be in the fall. Uh, Crozier came on board. They were all a whole movement be before the Sabbath even came on board. 
was this movement uh, of the Advent movement or the seventh month movement. And this whole thing project was brought to a halt. So it's not surprising. A lot of people think that the feast day movement that's come on board now is something new. It is not. It was part of the Advent movement all along. But what's going to go forward, the church that goes through to the end, our faithful soul, Sister White said. So it's the movement is going to pick up here uh, because you remember the comment Ellen White said, if other means fail, heresies will come into the church, separating the wheat from the tares. The Heavenly Father will take the reins into his own hands, finishing the work much out of the ordinary. Now let me paraphrase that. If we as leaders, responsible leaders, do not take it upon ourselves to do our duty and help our people, the Heavenly Father will take the reins in his own hands of this movement and lead it forward. In 1986, I started keeping the statutes. I never saw, the beauty was so great. I knelt on the river, Fresno River, and I prayed, Heavenly Father, this is such beautiful light. I was born and raised a fourth generation Adventist. I've never seen it before. If I never see another soul in this world, keep these appointed times. Please don't take them from me because I know they're right and true. I have lived now, I'll be 73 next birthday. I've lived to see since 1986, this has become a worldwide movement. I believe the Heavenly Father is taking the reins into his own hands and will remain to do so to bring about um, uh, a, a Torah observant people that includes the statutes and on and on. Okay. But before they had the Seventh day Adventist Church, that started in the 1850s. Before that, it was called the Seven Month Movement. That's correct. Well, they knew about this stuff before. Yes, they did. Oh, yeah. William Miller started out with this, uh, saying, and all of them realized. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Hi. I'm trying to fix. I'm trying to fix the the audio because we can barely hear you guys. Oh, okay. Hi, Susie. Hi, Susie. <laughs> Okay. Well, also, here too. in the Breckenridge uh, law that they tried to pass, it yeah. also included the Trinity. And when they was in front of Congress, that was what also was brought up. You mean we are going to be forced, like Maryland and Washington, D.C., to worship the Trinity, or we're going to be punished the same thing along with the Sunday law that was included yes. in and that was part of the testimony in front of Congress. I hear you. I hear you. Well, we're, we're, we're definitely seeing some of the final movements, but we have the story told to us here in the seven angels when we understand uh, their messages. When we see that fourth angel come on board, and we're going to see that in my, under, if, in my understanding, and I can, you know, and you can't, you can't live by Joseph's understanding, I, I hope. But in my understanding, I, I, I see that the um, fourth angel message will begin to go forward around the time of the Sunday law. That's how close we are to this business. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw drops of the latter rain falling now as we speak, because we know that these three angels' messages are going to be repeated. But this time, when we start to hear around the world that they're repeated, we can't hear it. We're going to move into the sixth angel, seventh angel, and then probation is going to close. And this helps us to know where we are in the stream of time. It sure encourages me. So you're saying the fourth, the fourth angel is the one, I mean, I know there's seven, but fourth one is the one that has to do with the, with the announcing and that's when the 144,000 are chosen and we go out and yeah, hopefully because we because go out to the multitude the with the fourth angels. I, what, what I'm understanding is as the characters become right today, What's this? like Sharon was talking about, what we need to do to have our characters made right. This is, is the righteousness by faith message that was given by Jones and Wagner. And as we see that this come about, uh, about the time of the Sunday law, we're going to see it begin. It's going to 
swell to a very loud cry. And this fourth angel that brings this whole business, it's going to light up the world um, right. with the glory from the, uh, he's reflecting the glory from heaven, his character and uh, from heaven. And as we see this taking place, this fourth angel, um, when, it, when the, uh, the world is lit up, we want to realize that the 144,000, to my understanding, are sealed before they can give that loud cry. Mm -hmm. So as that number is made up of the 144,000 and they are sealed, we're going to hear, hear that loud cry being proclaimed around the world. When we know that angels come, once again, it's going to be a while before the fifth angel and the sixth angel come on board. But it's not going to be very long. Right. Not very long. We're looking. Yeah, could I think possibly... we have three and a half years from the Sunday law, approximately. And I don't yeah. know how long before that. Right. You know, we'll go out and things will be okay for a while. Then they'll start getting rough. And right. we go and out I'm... and bring in the multitude. Right. It's exciting. After it's the... going to come up soon. Yeah, it is it's very exciting. Um, I kind of see that the three and a half year period actually go into the plagues, but but that's okay because and it's okay for everyone to have different views uh, uh, right now. But the, because the Heavenly Father is going to show us along the way as we get closer to this, we're going. I I believe that if we're going to be among the hundred forty four thousand at some point, guess what, brothers and sisters, we're going to find harmony amongst ourselves. A lot of harmony, more than we've ever known before. I've, I've never seen the feast camp being hit so hard in my life as I have the last few years. Everything is swept through the feast camp. But I believe that's going to change when our characters, you know why? It was a test in character. If, if I may read this one, one little portion here. This, is, this, this hits the nail on the head. The light of glory, the light of the glory of Yahweh must fall upon us. We need the holy unction from on high. However intelligent, however learned a man may be, he's not qualified to teach unless he has a firm hold on the uh, most high of Israel. He who is connected with heaven will do the works of our Savior. By faith in Yahweh, he will have power to move upon humanity. He will seek for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In divine power, if divine power does not combine with human effort, I would not give a straw for all the greatest man could do. Now, this is Ellen White speaking, by the way. The Holy Spirit is wanting in our work. Nothing frightens me more than to see the spirit of variance manifested by our brethren. We are on dangerous ground when we cannot meet together like Christians and courteously examine controverted points. I feel like fleeing from the place lest I receive the mold of those who cannot candidly investigate the Bible. Those who cannot impartially examine the evidences of a position that differs from theirs are not fit to teach in any department of the Heavenly Father's cause. What we need is the true baptism of the Holy Spirit. Without this, we are no more fitted to go forth to the world than were the disciples after the crucifixion of their Savior. The Savior in their destitution and told them to tarry in Jerusalem until they should be endowed with power from on high. Every teacher must be a learner that, that his eyes may be anointed to see the evidences of the advancing truth of Yahweh. The beams of the Son of Righteousness must shine into his own heart if he would impart light to others. That is uh, in the 1888 materials, page 533 through 534. So we, we, why couldn't we get along? Why did Satan come to the feast camp and just bring in uh, Lunar Sabbath, bring in a whole bunch of winds of doctrine? I'm, I'm not condemning. I'm just saying that more than any specific thing to mention, he brought disunity. And the disunity, I believe, was... Uh, the Heavenly Father allowed that to happen. You know why? My wife differs from me. She has things to say that's different than I do. But if we're going to stay married, 
we're going to have to get along, respect each other's views. And we've been working on that for 25 years. And in the feast camp, I'm finding that also. And the reason that we the harmony has not come is because we we weren't ready. We're, we're, re we're more ready to fight each other than to love each other. But when we can love each other and say, well, honey, I see that view and you know, that's okay. We'll, we'll know down the road what's right or wrong and it doesn't make any difference. It's not like I told you show or you told me so. It's like, you know what, honey, we're on the same page now. It doesn't mean right or wrong. No, it's just it doesn't, yes. How you might yeah. interpret it. it doesn't mean right or wrong. And so true. Sandy, oh, I, the story so, of Gideon comes to mind. We may have had too many of us there. Yes. And I, I'll tell you, Sandy, I've seen some beautiful, sweet growth in you. And I hope soon that you'll see some growth in me too. <laughs> but I attribute that only to the blessings and the workings of our Savior. That's what he's doing. He's preparing the way for us. But brothers and sisters, I know we're close. We are so close with all these things going on. The only, we, meet, we don't wait for a timeline. We don't wait for something down the road. Now is time to prepare. We don't have a moment. We need to be ready every day when we wake up. We want to think of that scripture. It says, choose ye this day whom you may, whom you may serve. We want to wake up and say, Heavenly Father, I want to choose you today. We don't know if we're going to live through the day or be dead by the end of the day. So we need to be ready at all times. Whatever's coming, we don't wait for what's coming. We'd be ready now. But we look for what's coming with great hope and expectation. Okay. Somebody else talk. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything to add to it or... We have a question here. Okay. I <laughs> um, now, now this uh, world shut down. Mm. Could that be the beginning of maybe the Sunday law coming through with, because of this? We have to wait and see. We don't we, know. We, we, <laughs> I think that it's it's some of the um, it's some of the early workings of bringing. I personally think of it as some of the the workings of bringing in the Sunday law. I don't see that the coronavirus is going to bring in the Sunday law, but what it is putting in place is the ability for world leaders to operate on a worldwide scale. That when the papacy becomes, it's the only one in the new new world order that has been acknowledged as a religion. But when it comes into power, when the deadly wound of the beast is healed, it will work through a global structure that is being uh, united now. And so this is part of the workings, but the Sunday law is uh, It's like one piece something of else. the whole puzzle yeah. that's gonna bring the Sunday law on. It is not the piece. I say time, time will tell. We don't we don't know and we can't we can't say dates or what's going on. We don't we just have to keep studying and praying and that's right. just go through and wait because we don't know for sure what's gonna happen next week, next month. That's right. Things might be better for a whole year. It's so true. But there's people that don't realize that uh, how much that our Pentagon works with the Vatican. They're they're like this all the time. It used to be in that book that I had, The New Underworld Order, the guy that wrote it got killed for writing it. He was a lot about Bush. And back then, back in the 80s and 90s, every Friday, it was like the Pentagon sent to the Vatican everything that was happening in the United States. It was they was working in hand and glove. This is way back then. Now that you can't find out what they're talking about. We just don't know until it happens. So we just have to be ready and right. spread the spread the news, get close to pardon me. We, we don't know when the Sunday law is going to be. We don't know the date. Right. But we, but we know when the Sunday law starts, it's gonna trigger a lot of things, it put a lot of things in motion. 
And yeah. you can get scared, you can get scared, but you have to remember what we're going through might be something that we haven't before, but it's really, I mean, you know, we have no idea if this really is part of it or if it's just gonna, it's just something they tested to see how it works and it's gonna go away for a year or two. It depends on if we're at that time. It depends on the conditions. God's got conditions and if we haven't met them, we just can't say for sure. And a lot of people try and say, oh, it's this and this. And I mean, you didn't hear, but I mean, some people do. And it's like, you just, we don't know. We need to just be ready, spread the word. Get people close to Jesus. A, you know. I would think of this as a contraction, like when you're going to have a baby, you know, yeah. it's always considered yeah. birthing pains. Yes. Right yes. now, they're they're like an hour apart. They're not two minutes apart. And when we get to two minutes apart, we know what's gonna happen. <laughs> well, Mrs. There are White, people that think this is two minutes. Mrs. And they White was very close. specific at what causes it, and it comes out of calamities. Like Randy was saying, they get more and frequency and more frequency. And then they will say the Sunday law will come out to stop those calamities. But you remember it wasn't that long ago. We said the very same thing with other things happened. People were here. It's a Sunday law. We're not going to have another camp meeting. It's a Sunday law. We're not going to have another camp meeting. Well, time and time again to where nobody believes it. So we have to be careful. Just be ready all the time. I don't think we have seen those calamities like we're, that we're going to. No, no. Something's going to happen further. And it's, this is just a testing. It's, it's waking up Adventists. It's waking up people. Seven plagues. God yeah, is we're preparing told it's supposed his to be people. Worse than we can imagine. And it, I can imagine way worse than this. So it's oh, yeah. not, we're not there yet. That's right. No, we're not. Yeah, Sister White said, that it, it, the imagine it's beyond the imagination. She she wrote a comment to that thing. Uh, usually, uh, when we anticipate something, we're more fearful than the event when it comes. We're relieved because it wasn't as bad as we thought it was. She said this is not the case for the end time. Yeah. And remember, the things going on with the yeah. super, I think it's telling people to get out of the city. I think it is kind of a hint. I mean, we've had that for a long time, but now with all the stuff going on and, you know, there's robberies, there's people stealing, there's people that are hungry, there's people that are getting crazy, um, all kinds of stuff going on inside homes. So there's it's... Prisoners out of jail. Out. Do what? They're letting the prisoners out of jail early and then they're robbing and stealing yeah. and breaking in homes. Yeah, but they did that not very long ago too out here. They have a they have a thing about letting them out now and then, but yeah. So we just don't know. There's a lot of homeless that are doing things. I have friends that the police keep coming with their guns drawn because they're in their backyard stealing stuff, you know. And it's like, so things are crazy. But we just need to keep praying and stay close to God. Know that He's going to protect you. When things happen, they will. But it it might all of a sudden just get better and. Be okay for a while we just don't know but we can't panic that's anxious and anxiety that can make you sick it can make you weak that means you don't have faith you need to have more faith in god and just just know and he's there he's in control fear of comes from the enemy fear comes from satan that's not that's one of right. god's tools that's something from satan's arsenal so don't be scared no we, um right. wife i can't be afraid i have Trust the Lord. That's right. right. And that's good. And he'll be there with you. Oh, yes. We were talking about the Sunday law. There's there's blue laws that have been on the books for hundreds of years that uh, right. sitting there dormant. All I got to do is start enforcing them. Well, Where are we there? In a lot of respects, that's how we uh, You had Constantine made a law, a Sunday law. Um, a religious holy day or holiday for the pagan worshipers of the sun god, and then you had the Jews that he was ruling that had the Sabbath. That combination rolled through the period of time and has rolled down to us. It's called the weekend. That's a package that came down in our society. The courts are closed on Sunday. Why? This is all the Sunday blue laws, right? So people say, oh, that would never happen. It's already here. So what I are the Noahide laws are talking about? 
Uh, what are they? Yeah, the Noahide laws. The Noahide laws, in my understanding, is the uh, the laws that, the, like universal laws, that uh, apply to all the people. And so uh, the laws that were made to apply to all the people of the world. And so today they're kind of using that for uh, that whatever laws, like laws for all the people there and those that didn't come on board were destroyed. But today the, uh, they're using that terminology, Noahide laws, to say that the laws that are made now are made for everybody. They're not just oh. for Jews. Okay, but they've been distinguishing the Sabbath. Those are Jewish. This and this out of the Bible, that's Jewish. The Noahide laws are for everyone in the world. They're global. Yes, and I think it, I think it has also a connection with the um, Agenda 21 and um, land usage on yeah. a universal basis. Yeah. Yes. So well, that's that's all tied together with universalism, um, with the global global controls. When I talked about the statutes in the year 2000, I think it was a year or two before that, the Vatican went and made the called the ICC, the International Criminal Court, and that was supposed to be all the planets. So far, the United States has rejected that. But they have taken different nations to court. And it was just recently, I know that um, uh, one of the attorneys for uh, President Trump was testifying. It dealt with some, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a religion. And they was uh, trying to defend this religion in the international court. And he had, he put a brief in for it. And that there is what, if you study that, they have said that the international court may eventually take over the United Nations. But that's something that you'll have to just wait and see because we don't know. Right. And while I'm uh, still on yep. here, I can see Clinton. That was Clinton that just talked. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you, I got you have a you have a uh, sermon you want to pop in here one of these little spots. <laughs> well, I just I I just realized I was a Johnny come lately. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We have it going on through Wednesday, and um, if you have something, you can let me know. We'll put you in somewhere. All right, I'll, I'll give it some thought. <laughs> okay. You don't have long to, have to, to go give it Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, you're finishing up Wednesday, right? Yes. And I have it went to Wednesday noon because that's all we had, but we can have one in the afternoon Wednesday because that's still part of it. Yeah. And um, the next two days, Sunday and Monday, I have Charmaine four to five because she was going to do three to five, but she can't. So she's four to five. So we have um, Sunday and Monday, three to four. Or we Sunday. can do it anytime. People are, you know. Sunday and Monday. Yeah, I have three. two of those. Okay. You can have I, one or both of them. I couldn't do tomorrow, but I maybe Monday. Okay. You gotta go and get with, your Easter eggs tomorrow. Pardon? <laughs> Just kidding. I said you gotta get your Easter eggs tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um Speaking of so tomorrow, Monday, Monday at three. Monday at three, and do I do I come in on the same venue here? Um, yes, it's the. Um, well, I have your email. I can invite you, and it comes a little bit different, but it's the same thing. Okay. So it's the same number, but I can send you an e an email. Okay, sure. So we'll put you down for three o'clock on uh, Monday. Monday, yes. Thirteenth. And invite right. your brother also. Uh, invite your brother also oh yes <laughs> right <laughs> I, I sent him stuff i haven't seen him so okay You're yeah <laughs> i haven't seen him for a while either <laughs> i've emailed him a couple times too so he must be busy uh i think he might be yeah uh, well it's good to see you all it's good, good to see, see you too, too.
Yes, thank you. So everybody can see it. All right, I put the little gallery view so everybody out there can see everybody now. Oh. <laughs> it's just a picture, but now they can see all the little pictures on there. <laughs> so everybody yeah. can wave to everybody on YouTube and Roku and... <laughs> And I, and I, how do you see that? <laughs> um, up in the right corner, it says speaker view or gallery view. Well, I don't seem to have that on mine. It's not on my Chromebook either. I have little radial buttons at the bottom and, and I can maybe it's, maybe across it's each bottom. one. I only get to see four people at a time. Are you on your computer or your phone, Clinton? I'm on my phone. Well, you should be on your computer, then it's better. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll do that. I'll do that on uh, Monday then. Right now, your little picture is a little <laughs> skinny picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, well, that sounds good. I will change that and put you on there and you can give me a title. Yes, I see a little I... hand down there, Chris. See a little hand? Yeah, I see that. <laughs> He's reaching for something down there. <laughs> There's Sarah way over there. Where's that little hand? They're ignoring us. <laughs> Chris, where's the little hand? Well, there he is. Oh, <gasps> We're all looking uh, for <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anybody have anything else they want to say or bring up or? Just something I... funny about tomorrow. I have yeah. a brother-in-law who works for a grocery store and he stocks the shelves there. Uh -huh. Well, he's going to be hiding all the toilet paper all around the store behind different products. So they have to find it like an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> he doesn't like Easter, so this is his way of getting back. <clears throat> Maybe before most, we... most stores are closed tomorrow anyway, but I don't know what's open and what isn't. Hard to We're say. Open. Um, Sandy? Yes. It's me, Tamara. Um, I just want to say thank you for your balanced um, comments because I just had two friends here today that are like, oh, panicking. You got to do this. You got to do that. But I, um, when I was reading through Maranatha last year, I found a really good quote and it's only given partial there. I was wondering if I could share it. It's from 1T202, no, 203 and 204. Okay. And it kind of, I think it's happening right now. Some I saw have a prejudice against our rulers and laws, but if it were not for law, this world would be in an awful condition. God restrains our rulers for the hearts of all are in his hands. Bounds are set beyond which they cannot go. Many of the rulers are those whom Satan controls. We know that, right? But I saw that God has his agents even among the rulers. And some of them will yet be converted to the truth. They are now acting the part that God would have them. When Satan works through his agents, propositions are made that if carried out, would impede the work of God and produce great evil. The good angels move upon these agents of God to oppose such propositions with strong reasons, which Satan's agents cannot resist. A few of God's agents will have power to bear down a great mass of evil. And I believe that's happening right now. There's yeah. so much evil with the child sex trafficking all the way up to the top mm -hmm. of government and all that they were trying to do, taking over with the new world order. So I believe that great mass of evil is coming down now. Why? She goes on to say, thus, the work will go on until the third message has done its work. And at the loud cry of the third angel, these agents will have an opportunity to receive the truth and some of them will be converted and endure with the saints through the time of trouble. Trouble, You know, I just get excited at the thought of the Patriots and Donald Trump even now. What if through the influence of Ben Carson, how many of these people that they might actually be converted and join us in giving the loud cry? Very exciting. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think we have anything to fear right now. There's no Sunday law happening right now. We, we're gonna see a great massive evil coming down. 
right now it's going on behind the scenes. The evil. And I just praise God for that. We need to keep praying. The evil well, has to be what? Sarah, about yes. two years ago, some, some yeah. of you have met my son. He's on a computer. He uh, does uh, security or host for some, uh, it's not Reddit, but it's a social media thing. And what he he's not doing that right now, but what he would do is he would watch the uh, the communications going on with them, and he would tell one of his FBI friends he needed to watch this guy over here. He's there looking for pedophiles. Hmm. And about two years ago, a year and a half ago, one day they the FBI arrest, arrested 800 pedophiles in one day. Yeah. And I went and told my son that, and he says that's nothing, Dad. We can arrest 800 every night and never run out. Whoa. It's that it is so massive. I think that I think the evilness is being revealed. It has to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. and, and I went and I went and watched this, this movie about the HIV virus the other day know. again. It's yeah. called And the Band Played On. Have you ever seen it? Well, in there, they interviewed one uh, homosexual. He was a, a pilot or a stewardess on a plane. And he's one of them that spread this. And when they was interviewing, he says, well, I need the, the, the names of your sexual partners this last year. 20, 30, can you give me it? And he says, 20 or 30, 250, you mean? He says, no, it's over 1,000. These people have no morals. Right. Well, they're being controlled by Satan. Completely totally. controlled by Satan. But people don't see it, and that's why it's being revealed. So that yes. people that you can't figure out why they're on the left, should I say, or whatever, they just, they don't see it. And it's going to be revealed. And when they see the people that they have looked up to, it's just like, what does it say about some Where? of the preachers that we look up to, and all of a sudden they fall? These people in the world are going to realize that some of their... People they looked up to, whether they're politicians or movie stars or whoever, the evilness is going to come out that's just going to make them sick. That's right. Amen. It's going to be a shock to, some, to a lot of systems out there. They're, they're going to wake up. We already know, but they, they don't, and they're hiding, and they're going to wake up. It's, it's coming. And so Tamara? Be ready. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing out that quote. Where was that found again? 1T203 and 204. One and it's in Maranatha. Let me see. I think it's in Maranatha page 202. Let me see. Okay. One, two, yeah, Maranatha 202 and 1T203 two, and 204. Okay. Thank you. That, yeah, I appreciate just, that. It's given me so much peace to know that when all my friends are like, the Sunday law has got to be coming. Yes. Oh, the time of trouble is here. And it's like, wait a minute. You could have. You would have been saying that in World War II. And we shouldn't be setting time and scaring people. It's not a message based on fear. Yes. You know? But it's just really wonderful because when, when have they taken down a great mass of evil? Never. But right. they're, they're looking to take down well, Obama, like, Hillary. The, it's, it's like Joe said, we need to be working yeah. on our characters. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. <laughs> Praise God. He's gonna, and God's going to win. And we're gonna have we're gonna I be see free Melody, to Melody Vargas. The Sunday law is not oh, a scary Melody. the Sunday law is not a scary thing. The Sunday law is uh, it marks where we are in the stream of time. Mm -hmm. We're not to fear the Sunday law, we're not to fear uh, the, right. or the one world order, we're not to fear uh, any of these things as long as we're in the hands of the Heavenly Father. There's no fear going through this at all, but um, yeah, we, we're not right and think that it's not going to take place as far as that part goes, but we're not to fear any of those things when they come. They will come and do their part when they come and when they're supposed to. Uh, we're not, uh, I have no faith nor thought to think that my handling on a Sunday law would it tried to make it ready. That is not the issue. The Sunday law triggers some events in scripture. It lets us know where we are at that time and some of the things that we need to be doing. 
of what angels' messages were giving. For one thing, the Sunday law, you know, that the, that fourth angel is speaking. Talking, you know, we need to know these things. Therefore, who are good, they're not. There, the Sunday's laws to hurt us. Can, is no, was my last uh, for instance, when when the uh, the deadly wound of the beast is healed, is that something that we should preach? Death? No. Is it events that's going to take place? Yes. We should be aware of all things that have a part in the. I'm back, Craig and Holly. And hi, Melody. We see your picture anyway. Yeah, how'd you get her picture on there? <laughs> is the ceiling is the ceiling time done prior to the Sunday law being enforced? The ceiling time? No. The Sunday law. Um, the Sunday law is That's around. Okay. The, it swells to a loud cry. It lets us know where we are. But okay. the ceiling time will be all the way until probation closes. It's there's two there's two of those. I believe there's two. Two, two ceilings. One hundred forty four thousand have to be sealed. Right. And at the right. very you end, it's make a decision well. about the Sunday until the Sunday law is here. So you can't seal somebody until they've gone through. Are you going to keep Sunday or are you going to honor God's Sabbath? So the yeah. Sunday law has to come before somebody can make that's the right. decision. But that's on the world. I, I go I'm along. Four thousand will be first. And Mrs. White, in early writing, she talks about, and I did a Sabbath school on this. It's, uh, um, she says that um, she heard these angels talking, and one angel said, and it's about they have to drink of this cup. She doesn't say what that is. She says, one angel said to the other angel, why do we have to, why do they have to go and drink of this cup? Let's just skip this and so they don't have to go through this. And then she says, a commanding angel came in and says, they have to go through this and drink of this cup so that the prophecies are fulfilled. So these things of God is fulfilled. But she doesn't not go to explain what that is. And it does not sound like a Sunday law. It sounds like something else maybe that Jesus went through in the garden or something. But she doesn't say what it is. Where is that? That's in early writings. Yeah, I believe there's two different probations. There's probation on the church which I believe that closes prior to the Sunday law because we already know we have enough information to make our own choices. That's right. But the second one is what when the that the Sunday law has to happen before the world can have their probation closed. And that's when the 144,000 go out and bring in the multitude and we have that power from maybe the fourth angel right. or I don't so know. Joseph was saying that um, the 144 are sealed prior to the loud cry. So the people that come in through the loud cry will not have an opportunity to be a, a part of the 144,000. That's correct. Okay, thank you. The great um, they'll be part the great of the great multitude. Right. Okay. Well, what I'm saying, I, I don't I, but what I'm not saying is that the 144,000 um, at a certain hour, at a certain second, are all sealed at the same time. I'm not saying that it's so, although it may be. But what I'm looking at is the sealing of the 144,000 could be a process that here a few, a few are sealed every little bit. And as, oh. they're, as they're sealed, they give the loud cry. I don't know there's a specific moment that 144,000 are sealed all at one time. Although that may be, I don't know. If you guys want a, uh, a good a, video to watch. I have a uh, pain on my knee, which I never do. And uh, I happen to talk to. I wonder if the, um, 
cup that the saints have to, to drink is um, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Anyway, I would like to say something. Uh, a good uh, Adventist uh, website is uh, www.prophecyagain.org. And uh, there's a video you should you can click on. It's disease, famine, calamities, Sunday law, persecution in the end. And uh, <clears throat> again, that website is uh, www.prophecyagain.org. And the video is disease, famine, calamities, Sunday law, persecutions in, in the end. And I it, think that's it, prophesy again, and that's again. It's fine to lead people there, but remember that's their interpretation. Yes, it is their interpretation. Don't panic and look at it. Just if you want to study it, fine. But it's there. There's a lot of people that have a lot of sensational things and get excited, and we need to just pray and study on our own, and not get overly excited about things. It's happening, but. I know, but he, he's in the guidelines of what's happening today, right now. And uh, but this, he gives this too, we don't know, Marvin. We he have gives to explanations of what he says, and it's pretty much in line with the Bible, because the first part of it, he gives biblical explanations. So you guys can watch it or not. Right. right. But we have to wait and see. Yeah. And Barbara, you're upside down. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought How'd so. That oh yeah. I thought that was <laughs> trying to stretch your neck or something. Make it feel better. She probably thought we were upside down. She's on my inversion table. <laughs> How does that I have a question? Can I ask a question? Always. Yes. Can you hear, I, I, hear me? Okay. Okay. So, um, from what I studied on, on the great multitude, I didn't see any mention of the great multitude in the last few chapters of Great Controversy. And it seemed to me that the 144,000, like um, Joseph just said, were getting sealed up until the close of probation, like 11th hour workers, some were coming in last, and that the great multitude is the same of all ages. That's how um, James White always referred to that there in, in Revelation. So, I mean, it's not going to be a huge, great multitude as we would like to think, because it's going to be very similar to as it was in the days of Noah, it would seem to me. So how do you all come to this conclusion that there's this great multitude separate from the 144,000? Um, let's see. That's a good question. The because uh, we go out and get the, the great multitude the, of those and there's a period of time that the 144,000 give the loud cry before probation uh, is closed. On the world Do you world. agree on with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. For the yes. for the world, I know some people may think right. there's two two probations, and I'm not against that. I. Yeah. I don't um, see it Joseph... as yeah. but the, what I'm saying is that if you have 144,000 people that are sealed that go forth and give a message before the station is closed, who do they give it to? That's right. Joseph, what, what happens to all the people that are brought in by that message? that are not part of the 144,000, then they have to all be killed then. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Because the only ones alive and translated without seeing death are the 144,000. I don't they, know if that's, I don't really know if that's a fact. I'm that, sorry, that's just me, I don't, no. I, th I think there's gonna be a lot of martyrs. And my own personal opinion, my personal opinion, I've talked to my dad, when the 144,000 are chosen and sealed, I feel that there will be more than that going out, but the 144,000 will not die, will not see death, but the other quote righteous at that time will be martyrs. 
Yeah, yeah that's that's makes sense. Sense. But okay. then they will go out and get the multitude, which are from all the churches, all the places. They will go get all the people and they'll have the power and people will see that Sunday law and say, hey, wait a minute. I remember hearing about that. There's something there. And, you know, you planted those seeds before it'll, it'll all come around. But a lot of those will be martyred, but a lot of them won't. And then there'll come a point where nobody is. It's, it's, he says the just or the righteous. I forget the words, but if you're righteous, you're righteous. And if you're not, you're not, whatever. Righteous, Bill. Let those be righteous, be righteous, Bill. I have a comment on, um, I have a comment on the ceiling part. If any of you have uh, done canning, you realize that when you take the jars out of the hot water and you set them on a towel or something for them to, um, to cool, that at different times you can hear the jars seal, pop. you can yeah. hear the pop. Oh, and, neat idea. And so it's not everybody at the same time that gets sealed because not every one of those jars cools at the same time. Um, but every one of them gets sealed as long as there was not something um, on the rim that um, prevents it from being sealed. And so I, that's the way I think of it. And then when, when some, one of us gets sealed or one of us um, passes away when our probation is, is closed, then the jar is sealed and God goes, yes, one more. Yep. And we have to be able to go out and get the multitude. And there are unfortunately some ministries that feel that they're waiting. The Sunday law is coming. And when that Sunday law comes, it's too late for everybody. He is on his way here to get us. And that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think it follows the Bible, but they preach that very hard and say Adventists don't understand. And there'd be no point. Sandy, Sandy, I think that's one of the reasons why there's going to be a lot of Seventh Day Adventists are deceived. Because right. that's yeah. that's yeah. kind of the thing. That's the only thing that they're thinking about is the Sunday law. They're not thinking about their characters and having their characters perfected. You know, the, in the seals, they rep, the first four seals represent the four, first four horses. And Sister White has a comment that correlates in the fifth seal, this, uh, the martyrs taking place. And it's right after the martyrs begin to occur that the probation closes during that fifth seal. And that's the time of the martyrs. And uh, like, uh, you know, the martyrs are not going to be just a little bit. I think uh, one word in scripture, it said something like a quarter of the earth population or something. We're talking about big things here, big scale. And it makes me think of the Georgia Guidestones that say uh, the design is to decrease the population, population down to 500 million. Well, we're, if that's true, and I'm not saying that it is, if that's true, we're looking at billions of people, people being killed over a short period of time. One person shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. That's a yeah. lot of people just around me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So uh, it's not real clear to me that uh, the 144,000, I know it's an, a name. Uh, Sister White says, uh, what is the quote? Your name only, a number only. But it's been suggested that some people think that the 144,000, the number of 144,000 represent uh, all the people uh, that come into that group. Some say in, in the Jewish, the only one that's um, counted in Judaism was those, the males that were able to go to war and what have you, 20 year old and upward that can go to war. That's how they counted. But it didn't mean that the whole, the families weren't counted in that too. So I'm, I'm not trying to, to make a, a determination here on any of this uh, as far as whether the 144,000 is not a larger number that it's meant by. Uh, that's a possibility. I don't know. The other thing is the mul great multitude that's called in. Are they all killed? I don't know. I think at that time we're going to, uh, the main thing is to strive to be among the 144,000 and then we're going to see as this develops. 
Strive yeah. to be any of them. Just strive yeah. to be there, even if I'm a martyr. But there are some people that also believe that the 144,000 are from beginning to end, you know, like creation and stuff. And it's like, well, they would have to come back from the dead and go out for what, three and a half years to, to bring people in. I don't think that's going to happen. No, because they Instead come out. Those living that didn't see death. It says that they came out of the tribulation. Yeah. I'd like to make she, Mrs. White had this one vision where she said she this guide took her into this room and there was 144,000 chairs. And they in front of each one there was a gold plate and she wanted it with a name on it. And she wanted to go in there and her guide says no you can't go in there. Nobody's allowed to go in there. And then she took them into another room which was so big she couldn't even see the end and they had silver name plates. And she said she saw some of the names when she was at the gold plates, but when she was out, she could not remember any of those. So they have already been number. They God already knows who they are. Some people don't like that, but that way you still have a choice. People say, "Well, he already knows, so it doesn't matter." He knows you're going to say that. So right. it's not like have to yeah. do it. Can I, have Can I interject something? Hello? Please. Hello? Yes, please. Hello? Okay. Um, I, okay. I just have a comment of an opinion, and I base my opinion on scripture by this, and I'm not, you know, this is my interpretation of scripture, which I'm everybody not, I'm might interpret. It is on the 144,000, and it Karen triggered that in my mind again, because I have believed this for many years that I go back to the sealing uh, when the disciples were sealed on the day of Pentecost. They were in the apostles, 120. They weren't just disciples. They were all sealed at once. They were a group and they were all sealed at once to go give a message. They That's gave true. They gave the message, and those that they gave the message to and went on with it and taught others, and they were converted, and they picked up the message, and it was a snowball effect. Why wouldn't it be the same today when the 144,000 are sealed, a blanket sealing of the 144,000, and they go out and give the loud cry? and bring others in to the message. They pick the message up and they take it to others. They, it just does the same snowball effect. And that is the great multitude that is brought into the number that no right. man number. And I agree. And when you go out, isn't that Pentecost? Yes, that's when what When the 144,000 are chosen and Pentecost comes down and then those people go out to the rest and, yes, she, and Mrs. White says that that's going to be repeated. Yes, Eddie, you had something to say? Yes. Um, sorry, it took me a while to get my microphone to work. Um, there's a book, I'm not sure who the author is, talks about the 144,000 representing Heavenly Father's army. And he's got, you know, there's verses in the Old Testament where Heavenly Father takes 12,000 out of each tribe to make up his army to go to battle. And I just think about that and think in the end, he's gonna have 144,000. They're gonna be his warriors to go out and spread the truth to bring in a great multitude. Oh, and um, these people are peculiar. They are not defiled by women, meaning as a woman can represent the church, they're not defiled by Babylon, the false, false doctrines. They're, they're pure. They're clean. They're virgins. They're going to go out and they're going to bring in a multitude. That's just um, my understanding of it. And they go hey, Eddie. Men. Eddie. Eddie's been wanting to talk. There you go. We're waiting, Eddie. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to this conversation and uh, I'd like to say a few things and then I, I'll get off the air. <laughs> First is, uh -oh. first is that uh, who is the 144,000? Now, Ellen White never believed that
that the 144,000 are is symbolic number. In fact, she wrote 116 quotations regarding the 144,000, and I have read every one of them. You can classify these uh, 116 quotations into about five different categories. The ultimate uh, conclusion that you have to come to when you read those 116 quotations is that they are the living that go through Jacob's trouble after the time of probation. They will not die after time of probation. They are the only saints living after the time of probation. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second, I will, I will agree with uh, Selma uh, on, on what she said, but I want to expound upon it. First of all, you've been talking about how many probations are there. Some have said two, some have said one, some have said whatever, but there's actually three. What is the first one? What does probation mean? It means that you have been sealed and you will be forever righteous or forever lost. Yeah, so the first sealing is the 144,000. Mm -hmm. uh, you must understand that I believe in type and anti-type. I also believe in the 2520 or the seven sevens. Now, if you take the type and anti-type, what Selma was saying, is that the apostles had to be in number before they could go preach and that happened on Pentecost. That's the type. And who did they go preach first to? They went first to the Jews. So that means the antitype is those, uh, the remnant church, the 144,000 that will, will be sealed on Pentecost that's why it's important that you get the date of Pentecost correct when you are celebrating it. They will first go to who? To our own church. That's the second probation, the probation or the sealing of our church. After the a church is, is sealed and they go out to the world, and the 144,000 after they uh, continue on because in the type, they went to the Jews first, then they went to the Gentiles. So you follow the same pattern of type and anti-type. So the third probation is of the world. This all has to happen before, uh, before the plagues come. Now, the third point I would like to make, uh, listening to you folks, is the uh, signal event. Everybody here has been talking about the signal event is the National Sunday Law. From that time, we have three and a half years, some have commented, uh, till Christ will come. And some have said, well, I take that three and a half years into the plagues after probation. You have not considered the type. Now, what is the type? The type as an understood by the pioneers written on two charts, the 1843 chart, so called because the date ended in 1843 and the 1850 chart, which was commissioned by uh, Ellen and James White. On both of those charts, the type was the daily and the abomination of desolation. So if you should happen to believe in type and anti-type, you have to also believe in uh, the uh, 2520, which explains the daily and the abomination of desolation. Now, what you're talking about so far is that the signal event of the National Sunday Law, you're saying that falls three and a half years before Christ, that must be part of the abomination of desolation. Now, I would, I would like to differ with you. I think the signal event is not the National Sunday Law. 
I believe the signal event is the daily. Now you have varying understandings of what the daily is, right. but what the pioneers believe to be the daily is in the days of the apostles was pagan Rome. In the latter days, as, as explained on the 1843 chart and the 1850 chart, is Islam, pagan Islam. So that should be your signal event. Now, if you read Daniel uh, chapter 12, you will find that there's 1290 days between the daily and the abomination of desolation. How, how many years is 1290 days? In literal time, because prophetic time ended in 1844. Uh, so now we're talking about literal time. That would be literal time of three years and seven months. So if you have that interim period between the daily, which is three years and f uh, six months, then you have the interim period of three years, seven months, you have at least, uh, what's that, six, seven years and a month uh, before the abomination of desolation, which may have the National Sunday Law included in it. I'm of the mind that the National Sunday Law will come within the 1290 days, which is the interim, interim period between the, uh, ab the daily and the abomination of desolation. I With would, that, I would shut up. I will, I will close my <laughs> mouth and sign well, thank off. You. Thank you, Eddie. We all have our ideas and those are good. Everybody can <laughs> decide what you want. and. Um, I appreciate I all the various words. ideas. We just got to all study them for ourselves and decide what the main thing is to be ready and just pray because we just don't know what tomorrow brings. And for all we know, well, the, we may not. The bottom have line. I hope I wake up, but. Folks, the bottom mm -hmm. line of what I'm saying is those who are crying wolf at this time, uh, saying that the time is so near, we do. I believe that we have at least 10 and a half years if, if the a daily were to start today. We still have 10 and a half years before Christ okay, can that's, come. That's good and that's your, that's your thought and that's very good, but not everybody yeah. feels that way, but that's a good study and they can get a hold of you if they want to learn more on it. I personally don't think, I hope we don't have 10 years left, but I well, think you know, differently, and that's okay. Everybody has their own. You know, I would like um, on Eddie's uh, comment there. You, you were talking about the beginning of the twelve ninety and twelve sixty, or at least the twelve ninety there. Uh, my understanding is that's the time of the Universal Sunday Law. There's two laws. What's the national? What's the universal? And so the white backs that up. So, um, but anyway, I, I, like Sandy people. says, those. Are all different. Yeah, yeah. That that cannot be true because the universal Sunday law uh, happens within after the plagues have already started. It it cannot happen until at least the third plague. Yeah. So that means yeah. after probation is the universal That's Sunday not, law. The sister White talks about the universal Sunday law and what it does, and she uh, I have those quotes on that. That'd be for another study. Yeah. But um, I would disagree with you, brother, on that. But I love you, brother. And I tell you, you know, and it's okay to talk about these things as far as I'm concerned and to have differences, like, like right. Sandy We're said, all too. Studying. Um, I'm not That's pushing my. That's how we learn. That's right. what they did way back then. I appreciate your comments. Thank you for, but... letting, me... Thank you for yeah. letting me interject. Oh, you're very welcome. We're glad Thanks, you're Eddie. here. Where's the family there? I don't see anybody beside you. Well, there you are. Hello over there. I, I saw one of you something. get on, then you disappeared, but hi. <laughs> We're glad you're on there. Yeah. We'll keep going all week. So this is kind of nice. It's um, better than not having it at all. And this way we can all join in and have different thoughts and ideas and um yeah sandy i really really appreciate this i, I this is just so amazing that, that we're doing all of this we're still together and yes that's awesome. yes yep. 
Yes. I'm not, you know, not. I have a thought um, about some of this when, when Tamara was mentioning about the, uh, uh, you know, this, the uh, 144,000 and the great multitude and so forth. Well, also too, it, it talks about Revelation that the uh, 144,000 are going to make up the five, I mean, the, the 12 tribes of Israel, come from the 12 tribes, sorry, 12 tribes of Israel. And <clears throat> I think that's why uh, I've, I've thought in the past that the 144,000 could be, uh, is a number, but also is talking about character because you know, um, when uh, uh, Jacob was blessing all his his children, he told about the different characters of each one of them that make up the uh, 12 tribes of Israel. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, we had a speaker that brought that out uh, when I first started going to BE, and he went through that, I think it's in Genesis, went through each of those characters. And if you go through each of those characters at their, well, kind of list everybody, because there's all different types mm -hmm. of there. Uh, Hi, it's just, right. You going know, back, going back to what Eddie was talking about, about the daily, I told my parents when I first started studying this stuff in 1982, <clears throat> that the key to understanding Daniel is the daily because it's in Daniel 8, it's in Daniel 11, and it's in Daniel 12. And it was my thing, what I feel is that Daniel did not understand it either. And that's why in Daniel 12, it says, go your way, Daniel, for at the time of the end, there's going to be some people that I want to make wise and they will understand it. Mrs. White also says she was not given any information on the daily. Now, why is that so? Why was she not given any information? It he must was. be coming for the last generation. Uh, Brother Keith, he, that's not that's not quite exactly what I recall. I have documentation that she said. At one time, when they asked her, she said, I was not shown any information. But later on, there is documentation that Ellen White said that they had the correct view before in the movement before 1844. Yeah. They had the correct view on the daily. Yeah, I remember that. And yeah, so what we're say. looking for in the future is when the daily power to rule of all the sovereign nations are taken away and we go to a global authority. The daily power to rule of the sovereign nations is taken away and the one world government is set up, it will have a papal head to persecute. There's the second application of the daily. That's what I see anyway. And so I'm not claiming that you don't have to believe that, but it says after the deadly wound is healed in Revelation 13, after the deadly wound is healed, that power is given 42 months to persecute. That's two and a half years. Yeah, and I have, a, I have a quote by Mrs. White on that here. She right. says, the remnant people of God are, that's putting on a future, are to endure persecutions. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. They are to give the warning message against the power represented by the beast. There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. She puts that 42 months in the future there. Right. That's and so right. does Revelation. Revelation 13 says, after the deadly wound is healed. Now, yeah. my question to you or to anyone would be, has the deadly wound of the beast been healed at this point in time? Absolutely not. Well, I see that whole thing being future because... The I church agree. has always said it's, you know, 1738, uh, seven, uh, 1798. Right. But when you go to the prophecy, it says the wound was, there was a wound, then the wound was healed, and after it was healed, it was allowed to continue 42 months, which is right. after the healing. And that's not what our church says at all. Right. 
Well, the, the healing, once the deadly wound is healed, it is given power and authority to persecute on a global scale. This also denotes a, a, a global power coming into structure here. And uh, so what I'm saying is that the deadly wound in 1929, Mussolini gave the Lateran, Lateran Treaty stating that the, the papacy would have a place to go and lick its wounds and heal. But not until we see that it has wor worldwide power to persecute is the beast healed. It's not healed yet. Once right. that's given, we're going to it's going to denote a period of time. And that comes at the same time as the setting up of the new world order or the transfer of the daily. That's where the daily plays a very important role, past and present, to understand the concept. And it was the, the transfer of the daily from pagan Rome, referred to just as paganism, when the daily, the power to rule pagan Rome was transferred to the papacy, the papacy was acknowledged as the abomination that maketh desolate. And this again is what happens in the end time application is when the daily power of the nations is taken away in this global structure set up with a papal head as its religious authority. It has power then to persecute and make laws worldwide. And so, and this is what we're seeing coming into, into play. Many years ago, I sent to Congress for a copy of the um, Genocide Treaty. In the Genocide Treaty, that, that lets every nation of the world know if they do not come under the one world umbrella, they commit genocide and they're taken out. And this is the struggle we're seeing going on now before our eyes. Once the um, the power, once it's set up, okay, I lost my thought there. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess it's called a senior moment. I quit having senior moments. But anyway, uh, maybe you can make a comment and it'll trigger it back for me. But, oh, the daily. When the daily power to rule is taken away and the abomination of death is set up, this happened twice. It happened once before the deadly wound was given, and it's going to happen when the deadly wound is healed. And in the Genocide Treaty, it shows the only religious element, the only re religious church that's recognized in the Genocide Treaty is the papacy. No other Protestant church is recognized. They're the only ones given and granted authority under the, the New World Order when it's set up, right from the get-go in the Genocide Treaty. And I'll stop and let you comment. Well, if nobody has a comment on that, <laughs> I have a comment. We seem to be going back and forth on the subject here, but I didn't get a chance to interject on the subject of the 150,000 because another subject came up. But I have one more thought on that. And Eddie, Eddie triggered it, talking about type and anti-type and the 12,000 um, from each tribe. And I'm in total agreement that each tribe has a characteristic. It's just like the seven churches, each have a characteristic of seven. What's that noise? <laughs> anyway, um, so the uh, 144,000, it's it talks about them being 12 tribe, uh, 12,000 in each tribe. If that is a literal number. Where is this type and anti-type? Exactly, you know, if we're going to go type and anti-type, the only ones that were counted were the men. The women and children were never counted in the numbers. So my point is, that's saying that the 12 tribes, that the 12,000 in each tribe only were men, okay? I believe that the 144,000, because it's not a literal number in my estimation, because women and children aren't counted. Maybe there might be 144,000 men, but there will also be that great multitude of women and children. And Very good point, never thought of that. <laughs> well, okay. I, again, I don't know that it matters, you guys. We're kind of going off on things pretty strong. and. Right. Everybody has their opinion. I believe there's 144,000. I don't care if there's 544,000. I want to be one of them. Right. Um, right. And if I'm not, I, I will, it's kind of scary to say, but I'll be happy to be a martyr. 
I just want to make it to heaven and help other people get there. So, and I even I think about, it. okay, I'll go to jail. I'll go to jail. Maybe I can save somebody in prison. That's know? right. We just don't know. And we don't know as far as times and dates and there's various charts. There's various everything that people have and they just need to study them. And, you know, if you know somebody that you want to study with, go ahead and do it, but keep praying and reading the Bible and study it out for yourself. God will show you. And a lot of it to me, maybe it's just my feeble mind. A lot of it, people get into arguments about, I'm not talking about you, but some people do. And to me, it's not important. It doesn't matter. We need to be ready because our probation could end tonight, tomorrow, next week. We don't know. We just need to be ready and be a good example to help other people be ready, not be afraid, just be there. And if the Sunday law comes tomorrow, I'll be shocked. I don't think it will. No, but if yeah. it comes, you know, in a year or so, <laughs> and then if we have three and a half or 10 years, I'll be sad, but three and a half, We'll, we'll know as it comes and we need to just okay. keep praying and God will help us through it. And a lot of people hear various things and they get frustrated because they don't understand. My mind sometimes just gets burnt. And I used to go to daddy and go help. I don't get this, you know, and he would calmly explain it. But a lot of it, it doesn't matter. And people think they have to know this. And what you guys are talking to each other, it's great because you understand each other and where you're coming from. Some people are probably listening and being like, I give up, you know, it's too much. So I think we kind of have to be careful how far off we go on all these different ideas and um, just let you know that I appreciate it all. Just keep studying and keep getting close to God and anybody that's listening, don't be afraid and don't get flustered and worried. A lot of people know a lot more. A lot of people know a lot of deep things. A lot of people have been shown things, but God's there to help you. So there's my speech. Amen. Amen. I have something else I could share <clears throat> if I could talk. <clears throat> Is that okay? You coughed on us. <laughs> I'm sorry. My voice, I was like, oh, I can't talk. You didn't I'm cough. Like, oh, here, Wait, am I on? Yes, go yeah. ahead. Okay. So um, many years ago, when I started getting interested in some people at my church that were Shepherd's Rod, the pastor gave me this um, research that M.L. Andreasen had done on that group of people. And so I found this letter recently and I was reading it. Um, it was actually written December 25, 1942. And think about the war going on around that time. And on page four, I came across something really interesting. He was talking about how the sanctuary was already being put down. And then he said, as with the sanctuary, so with other doctrines, the field is divided on the subject of the Trinity. Now, I don't know what he believed, and I don't know what, you know, we know what it's divided on now, but did you know it was divided back then? I thought that was interesting. And then it says the vital doctrine of the 144,000 has ceased to be preached. Fantastic theories in regard to the war, Hitler and the future are being promulgated. The Battle of Armageddon is a present source of discussion and unauthorized books appear, dot, dot, dot. And I thought, wow, you know, they used to preach the 144,000, at least we're discussing it. And that's a good thing. And it's talking about all these fantastic ideas that were coming out about the war. So <laughs> we have to be careful about that. So thanks to everybody for sharing on the 144,000 should be preached <laughs> yep well, i think they're being chosen and i i just can't wait until you'll know it um i understand that when you are chosen or when you're sealed that you will not you either won't remember things you've done wrong or at least not well i don't know and that's so i think about things i'm like oh man i'm not there yet i can still remember so <laughs> gotta keep gotta keep trying and praying because I want to be there and be ready. That's how that's what we need to strive for. Didn't she say strive to be among the 141,000? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So we need to do that. And if it turns out it's something else, just strive to at least be there. Yeah, and help as many people get there as we can. We want them to come fast, but then I know a lot of people I want to be ready, and I know they're not. Um, not that I'm perfect, but you know, family and other such that don't go to church they don't you know believe anymore a lot of friends and 
I just pray that they'll see something and maybe it'll take a Sunday law for some of them to wake up. So yeah. only God knows and we just have to have our faith in him. Yeah. Well, you know, there's something that um, is said uh, time and time again. One, well, one thing that brings us into timelines, uh, the study of timelines, is that some people believe that Daniel 12 is future. In Daniel 12 are timelines, and this is what keeps triggering uh, prophetic um, uh, studies. But a lot of people are coming on board and they're saying prophetic time ended in 1844. Prophetic time is symbolic time and literal time is not prophetic. And I think that there's a great mistake with this because whether it is a literal time that's been prophesied or symbolic time, it's all prophetic. And we're trying to trying to break that word up and say that the symbolic time was prophetic in, in 1844. So many people are saying that any time prophecy that's left is prophetic, and even the 6,000 years is prophetic. That may be Sherry, meant. Sherry, what did you tell me about that? You said something about the um, people that say that things won't be repeated. Wasn't that you? And we were talking about um, the the um uh, I forgot okay you mean uh you said, won't repeat you it or what she said uh about well, as time is gonna you know the three the three and a half years and how things will be repeated and some people insist that they never will but you read something in the great controversy about um something had to be literal and it's in the future yeah. it fit i just yeah. can't remember it now yeah yeah I don't a lot remember. of people think there's nothing in the future nothing's you know it's just going to happen it's done and well, we know the history will be repeated but there are yeah. people that say there's no three and a half years in the future it's already done that's why they say when the sunday law i comes. have a i have a quote that says but from mrs white i can look it up it says that the prophetic periods of daniel will be repeated and I've showed that two or three times at the church. Um, here's one here that I have from the sixth Bible commentary. It talks about Pentecost repeated with great power. It is with an earnest longing that I look forward to the time when the events of the day of Pentecost shall be repeated with even greater power than on that occasion. John says, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with its glory. Then, as in the Pentecostal season, the people will hear the truth spoken to them, every man in his own tongue. Now, what, what, what truth is that? Is that the Sabbath truth? Is that, you know, she doesn't, that's one of those things that Mrs. White says some, it's going to be repeated, and then she doesn't say exactly what. Right. Now, is that all sealed on a Pentecost day? I don't know. I think it's the message that, that we will be giving on Pentecost, because I have a statement where she says the power that was given at its opening, so it will be at its closing. It's indicating that it opened for the apostles, on the, the Pentecost, then it's been open the all this time. It has not closed and opened and closed and open. It's open until that final time when the 144,000 are sealed. Because she's talking about it's the power at the end will be greater than what the apostles experienced at its close. So there's an opening and a closing. Nothing in between has happened to close it. Right. So there's there's a message. The power is given to, in, at its close, to give a message at, at its close. Well, hello, Tanya. I see you on there, and I saw Arlene got on. Hi, Arlene and Roseanne. You guys are there. No pictures. Take your mute off. Say something. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh-huh. Hello, guys. See you tomorrow.
I'm going to start talking and you guys are going to tell me to shut up. <laughs> Hi, Tanya. Well, well, hello there, David. Hi, David. <laughs> He's talking. It's like we're all here. Everybody's in the picture. Do you have us to see all the faces? Oh, hi, David. Tanya? The East is represented. Can we see all the faces? Can we see the faces? We can. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Except, let's see. Uh, Eddie's no longer on there. Wendy, Melody, Russ. I'm calling everyone out that doesn't have video since you made me put video on. He's not sending me threatening text messages telling me to show my face, just so you guys know. <laughs> Craig and Holly, Arlene. Oh, there oh, they are. There she is. <laughs> she scares you. Tanya, Tanya needs to be here. She's going to say good night. Well, you, well, Sandy threatened me. She was like, get your face on there. <laughs> and she obeyed. Well, yeah. I did. Sandy, you guys know Sandy could be a little scary. <laughs> Hi, Arlene. Are you there? You can unmute and at least say hello. Roseanne, sometimes people are new on it. It's hard to do. Roseanne had trouble. She was trying to get on here before and had trouble. It is. I don't know what was going on with mine either. I kept trying to put the video on. Then it wasn't showing us at all. Then it came up on the name that I had from my phone. So I was like, ah. Yeah, I saw that Nacho. Mm -hmm. I knew that one. Was that you? Yeah, Nacho was me. Okay. <laughs> but for Nacho I, I want to know what Christopher is doing. He's so serious looking at his computer typing. Is he? What are you doing, Chris? I'm not doing anything. I'm just listening to all you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like how you got kind of close there. <laughs> yeah, it's connecting to you guys and, and hear everything everybody has to say. It's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've missed these discussions. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sandy. What time is it there? You guys, it's late. Nine. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Oh my goodness. That's why we saw her take the little man away. Yeah. 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 We saw his little arm come reaching and then he took it. It was like, come on. Bring that little <laughs> arm back. I want to see that little arm. Yeah. I'm going to go. Did, did you have a blessed foot washing? Yeah, we had a good day. Uh, yeah, we had a little uh, little Passover time together, a little foot washing, a little grape juice. We went to Wayne's. A little study, and yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, it was fun. It's fun with Junior, too. My yeah, <laughs> first foot washing with Junior. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did he, did he splash around? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, he was all over the place. <laughs> Everything's different with Junior. <laughs> Every day. And I have to ask, I know it's an 819 number. I know that's Canada, but who is that? You seem to know Joseph and Selma? Yeah. I think she's sleeping. Is she sleeping? Knock, knock. <laughs> Melody's mother. That's Melody's mother. That's funny. Huh? Uh, Sandy, that's Melody's mother. She Melody Vargas's mother. Oh, but her Hi. phone number is Canada. Is she from Canada? No, that's the number we type in to get on. That's the, the meeting number. No, the 81. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I looked it up and, well, that's weird. We're on Zoom and I looked that phone number up and it's from Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> mm. so no, she's curious. from Canada. Okay. Well, see, I just thought, oh, that's somebody we know from Canada. Well, hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. You know, I, 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 I really hi, I finally got it to work. Yeah, I really appreciate everyone. And, and I'm probably the one that says, oh, just forget it, because I don't understand a lot. But you know what I'm hanging on to is I'm hanging on to that verse in the Bible that says, when you see these things coming, look up because your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. Amen. Not be afraid. Amen. And it gets scary. You read the news and it gets scary, but we just have to know that it will pass. It might get better. It might not. I think it will for a while, but no matter what, 
it will pass and it's so long, we'll be in heaven. I think it's a privilege that we got, we got to be born day and time. Hi, Roseanne. Good to see you. Here's Roseanne. Hi. I have Hi, to leave in a few minutes. I have to go to work. <laughs> Hi, Roseanne. Well, Hello, I good. miss everyone. That's good I you have a job that. anyway. Some people can't say that, so there's a I'm blessing. thankful I have a job, but they're working me to death. <laughs> well, there are some that wish they could. I know. But I took a stand for the Sabbath. I told them I'm not doing it no more. I made I rededicated my life to the Lord and I've given them two and a half years and uh, I can't do it anymore. I mean, I'll be there for them, but not on the Sabbath. Very good. Good for you. Well, we're going to be here through Wednesday. So if you're, I don't know what your hours are, but. Well, usually I work from 10 o'clock at night to six in the morning, but they're having me, they're so shorthanded. So many people have quit that they're. I just, I find I, I'm getting too old to work that many hours. Yeah. All right. Well, you take care of yourself. I'm glad you got on here. Well, I had to delete it and uninstall it and then reinstall it. Okay. Yeah. So, but I love everybody. I miss you all. I got to go get ready for work and I'll all tune right. in tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. You take care. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You know, we went to the store the other day and this kid you walk in the right in the entrance this kid's got his little spray bottle his little mask on and he sprays your cart down and everything and joseph you know, we didn't it's the first time that's ever happened and uh, they weren't issuing out the little hand wipes but he sprays your cart down and wipes them off for you before you go in the store so joseph says how you doing and he goes oh i'm okay you know and you could tell he felt he oh, couldn't it. turn it off thank you job and but he said he didn't say anything bad about it he just said um at least i got a job he says i'm blessed yeah at least that's a good attitude him. He's yeah i found out the other day I, I found out the other day why we need masks i was taking my cart back to my car and this girl was there spraying the carts and she sprayed my face <laughs> and huh? my mouth oh Jeez. With the antiseptic or whatever they're using. Well, you know, <laughs> it was an accident, but um, I guess that's yeah. why we're supposed to wear masks. <laughs> uh, my dad called from Washington and said that there's a green truck driving through the neighborhood spraying us some kind of a spray. They don't know what it is. Oh. Anyway, uh. you know, one comment on, I know that prophecy is kind of like a calendar study. Uh, there, there are people that you know, calendar. Carl Baxter was one that had a very good understanding of calendar. Not everybody can do that. Now, I personally believe with all my heart that the plagues, the trumpets, the thunders, um, the seven seals, all are a package for the end time people. Now, it's not something to be fearful of, and it's not something that you have to know right now. I believe that the Heavenly Father, this is all part of a package, roadmap, and calendar all combined that the Heavenly Father will let us know where we are in the stream of time. And this will come out. Not everybody is uh, a people that can deal with prophetic timelines or even with prophecy. So it's not something that I have to understand right now or I'm going to be lost. I love what Brenda said there because this is where um, the people that are not deeply uh, prophetic minded uh, people, it doesn't mean that uh, it's just like somebody that plays a piano, Randy Branch. I can play piano like that. That doesn't mean Randy's better than me. He doesn't claim to be better than me. And I don't claim to be better than him. He just has a talent that I don't have. And that's the way it is as we go through this together, we're gonna to find some has more of a talent on this and the other. And so we, what makes sense, the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us as to what's going on at that time and what to believe and, and when these prophetic things come about. They're not to be afraid of them. Daniel and Revelation are the books for the end time people. They're not to be afraid of, but at the same time, they can seem confusing to most people. So uh, 
Just know that I believe that the Heavenly Father will make it clear in his time to each individual how he sees fit. It's not something that we push on anybody. There's, there's certain people that are driven or have a passion for certain things. And that's what they get into, like a calendar or whatever. And uh, so we, we, we're all in this together. And I believe that the Heavenly Father will reveal it to each heart uh, where they are in the stream of time, where they are in their mind, and give them the information they need to see them through. Whether some may have a little of prophecy, might may, some may have a lot. So it's Thank nothing. To I agree, and I do. I do have you. You mentioned uh, Carl, and he left me his stuff, and um, I have a um, calendar that I go by. And it goes to 3031, so we can't go past that, okay? <laughs> it has to come by or before that, or our calendars are done. It's like the Mayan calendar, it ends on 3031, so hopefully it'll be before that, but we can't yes. go past that. <laughs> Just thought I'd let you all know for excitement. Carl and I would get on the phone and, uh, and talk calendar sometimes two, maybe three hours at a time. Oh. And we had some difference. Before he died, we we were in harmony on the calendar, um, which he, you know, but anyway, so uh, there it is. Well, I miss Carl. He was, uh, he could dialogue calendar day and night. He had quite a passion for uh, for the calendar. That was beautiful. Very unique. In the there, we only have 11 years. <laughs> uh, I just was, was laugh. <laughs> He could yeah. laugh, the belly laugh that was really you good. You could hear him. Yes. David, where is yeah. Tanya? <laughs> she left you and that's not right. <laughs> I don't hear you because you're muted. He is muted. Huh. He's ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can smile for us, David. He <laughs> You gotta unmute yourself. You can talk to us. You have important things to say. You're on the schedule, I think, this week. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I keep putting you on there. Well, that's cool. So, I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna go walk the dogs with John. Okay. okay. Have fun. Don't go get in trouble out there. Thank you, everyone. I'll be back. All right. Here, I wanna thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you were here. Bye. And is, is Melody here or did she leave? I mean, her name's here. Is Melody here? I don't know. She may I'm still here. Okay, there she is. I saw her little yellow. Hi. All right. What happened? Uh oh. Are you sharing with us, Daddy? Oh, Were you wanting to share with us? If you hold on. <laughs> I uh, was trying to push the button and the share went off. But I did want to say something. Okay. I've seen um, the past couple of weeks, Doug Bachelor has a new end time timeline that includes Daniel 12 literal timeline. And, and I thought that was interesting because I thought he was of the mainstream Adventist thought that they, they were all in the past. So, so you're saying Doug Bachelor believes in Daniel? Oh, can you hear me over the dog? <laughs> Whose dog is that? Mute is the that dog. Mute the dog. dog. <laughs> Somebody's dog is barking. I think that's the one that's going to was going to get ready to walk the dog. Brenda, going for a walk. You need to okay. mute your phone. I muted it. You can't. Okay. So, um, Patty. Yeah. Are you saying that Doug Bachelor believes that Daniel twelve is future? Evidently, I um. I have oh. copied his that timeline, and I, I, it's in my computer, and I'm using this little Chromebook for the Zoom because my computer doesn't have a webcam. 
Um, if I logged in on my computer, I could share it. Yeah, no, that's okay. I j I can check it out. I I was just okay. Oh, uh, the that's it. That would be interesting because I know uh, the BRI has came out against it, those things being future Absolutely. time and time again. Yes. Here, I found that yes. quote that I have that talks about them being future here. Just let me read it to you. Uh, come back here. In the scriptures are presented truths that relate especially to our own time, to the period just prior to the appearing of the Son of Man. The prophecies of scripture point and here their warnings and threatenings preeminently apply. The prophetic periods of Daniel extending to the very eve of the great consummation throw a flood of light upon events then to transpire. None need to remain in ignorance. None need to be unprepared for the coming of the day of the Lord. And that's from the Sabbath Herald, Tuesday, September 25, 1883. That's the one. And the 2300-day prophecy is included with that. They made note. Of yes, but the 2300-day prophecy mm -hmm. did not reach the great consummation or the second coming. The only prophecy that reaches that is Daniel 12. Well, if you have... The Daniel 12, the, the 1290 days, when you go to Daniel 8, Daniel 8, 13, the 2300 days also includes the daily and the abomination and desolation. There's four things that's mentioned there, the daily, the abomination and desolation, trampling on the host, and trampling on the sanctuary. But, but people I, don't want to ask the question. They just want the answer, which is in verse 14. Right. But what I was saying is the 